This is Michael Ware. You're listening to The Morning Five on Thursday, March 2nd, 2023. This week, we're partnering with the Park Forum uh, to uh, and sharing with you devotionals from the Park Forum. This morning, uh, we have our final devotional from the Park Forum to wrap up the week. This one, based on uh, jo- John 6, We'll begin with the scripture reading. Just a note, this isn't one continuous um, uh, reading of, of, of scripture, section of scripture. These are, uh, this is basically a compilation of verses, uh, but all from John 6. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. May God bless the reading of his word. Now a reflection from the Park Forum's John Tillman. Many follow Jesus out of impure motives. The feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle of Jesus in all four Gospels. It is the fourth of seven and therefore the central sign that that John chooses to demonstrate who Jesus is. Like a central pole of a tabernacle or tent, it supports some of the loftiest, most direct messianic claims that Christ makes. A tiny detail at the beginning of chapter 6 tells us that it is almost Passover. The rescue from Egypt is on everyone's mind. Over the course of the chapter, it is like John runs Exodus in reverse. Meeting with Jesus on the mountain echoes the meeting with God at Sinai. Eating the bread and fish in the wilderness mirrors the manna and quail. Jesus miraculously crossing the water with the disciples reflects the the crossing of the Red Sea. The crowd finds him on the other side and demands a sign like those Moses showed to prove to both the leaders of Israel and to Pharaoh that God spoke through him. The crowd seems to have noticed the parallels as they directly refer to Exodus in questioning Jesus. Moses had said to God, what if they do not believe me? This crowd says to Jesus, what sign will you give that we may believe you? Jesus isn't impressed with their request for a sign or their motives. They've already seen signs, but they don't care what they mean. They just want to eat miraculous meals. They just want a bonus of blessings. They want a physical kingdom and political victory. They are uninterested in anything he taught on the mountain. They just want his power. What are our motives for pursuing Jesus? Do we want the man or just the manna? Do we even want to live in Jesus' kingdom? Or do we just want to live in a nicer version of Egypt where we are in charge? Do we care about his miracles for others? Or do we just want him to fill our bellies and our other base desires? If these are the motives of our following Jesus, he will disappoint us and offend us. But if, like Peter, We realize that Jesus is the only source for the words of life, that he is the Holy One of God. Then nothing will tear us away from him. All right, friends, thank you for listening to The Morning Five, brought to you by the That Sounds 
fun network uh, supported by the Center for Christianity and Public Life. Uh, just one more time, thank you for, uh, thank you to the Park Forum. Just wonder, wonderful devotionals. They do great work. And you could learn more about them at theparkforum.org. One opportunity I want to note is that for uh, college and seminary students headed into ministry, the Park Forum uh, has a Student Writers Month program. Uh, uh, 22 students uh, will be uh, selected to write about Deuteronomy this June with coaching help and, uh, and support for that through the Park Forum. You could learn information about the program at theparkforum.org slash studentwriters. Again, theparkforum.org slash studentwriters. All right, let's get to the news for today. Uh, as I indicated in the Morning 5 yesterday, it didn't look like Mayor Lori Lightfoot was going to make the runoff uh, for in her re-election campaign, uh, and she didn't. So in quite a stunning outcome, she will watch the election to replace her from the sidelines, uh, from the mayor's office, but from the sidelines, as Paul Vallis, uh, who's a, a moderate, uh, and Brandon Johnson, who is more progressive, younger, um, uh, run uh, to succeed her. The race is expected to focus a great deal on crime, law enforcement. It's a really sharp distinction between the two candidates. We'll actually talk about this race, uh, both the outcome of the initial election and what the runoff might look like uh, with uh, Pastor Chris Butler, uh, my friend, uh, Pastor Chris Butler, we'll talk to him uh, on where we are this weekend. So if you want to uh, know more about this race and also just hear some incredible wisdom from Pastor Chris Butler, uh, 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 be sure to, to be tuned for uh, to stay tuned for that episode to drop this weekend. Second, uh, after a multi-year investigation, uh, intelligence, U.S. intelligence agencies have released uh, an assessment uh, that the Havana syndrome, which refers to sort of inexplicable, now kind of officially inexplicable uh, medical ailments, strange and painful acoustic sensations, a kind of trauma that had lingering effects, uh, that this mysterious element, uh, the, the intelligence agencies uh, released an assessment that this mysterious element is not the result of actions from a foreign adversary. There was, uh, again, years-long speculation that this was Russia or some other um, some other foreign adversary that was deploying unknown technology to to harm US uh, diplomats and and officials according to the intelligence assessment that the Washington Post has an exclusive on uh, there it is highly unlikely that um, that uh, this is uh, the result of a foreign adversary. Finally, uh, Governor of West Virginia, Jim Justice, who is widely believed to be heading into a campaign for the U.S. Senate running against incumbent uh, uh, Joe Manchin, uh, Justice on Wednesday signed a bill allowing people with concealed carry permits to take firearms onto public college and university campuses. Uh, Governor Justice declared it a proud day for me uh, and said, 
for crying out loud, the doors are wide open, referring to the fact that guns have been present on state campuses even without the new law. Uh, he continued, this is just saying the law-abiding people have a right to be able to carry if they choose to do so. We just hope and pray that there's never a problem. We can't ensure in any way that there won't be a problem. Uh, but he said he wants the law to, quote, send a message to the world by God. If you want to mess with us, we can mess back. All right. That's your news for today. Let's close with Dallas Willard's rendition of the Lord's Prayer. Dear Father, always near us, may your name be treasured and loved. May your rule be completed in us. May your will be done here on earth in just the way it is done in heaven. Give us today the things we need today and forgive us our sins and impositions on you as we are forgiving all who in any way offend us. Please don't put us through trials, but deliver us from everything bad, because you are the one in charge. You have all the power, and the glory too is all yours forever, which is just the way we want it. All right, that's the Morning 5 for uh, this week. Again, tune in to where we are uh, this weekend, and we'll be back on Monday for another episode of The Morning Five. Hope you have a great weekend.